Even in the age of AI and ChatGPT, it is an essential part of science to clarify knowledge jointly and collaboratively. Not only to gain knowledge more efficiently, but also to test and to develop joint expertise within a research team, which is beneficial and productive on several issues. This is where this report comes in. In this presentation, we report on a collaboration between the Department's Computational Humanities and Media and Communication Research. Both departments are associated at Leipzig University in Germany. Our talk is titled, Cultural Motifs on Big Data, a Semi-Automated Topic Modeling from a Sociocultural Constructionist Perspective. In this presentation, we, first, discuss how the term big data is framed and globally instrumentalized during discursive processes. Secondly, we argument how combined approaches of both framing analysis and topic modeling can help to, thirdly, examine how the media communicative framing of big data can be collected, analyzed, and evaluated. Finally, we will share our results and discuss them. When you think of big data, there are certainly already associations with the term. Probably they will have been formed in your scientific work and expertise with digital data systems or big data sets and maybe also procedures from data science. And images of large computing systems might spring to mind, too. Computing systems that allow for a lot of memory and volume and that work in a variety of daily data environments. So, besides volume and variety, big data is also associated with velocity. Which is the third quality, according to Kitchen, for which, from an ontological perspective, big data stood and continues to stand. All these associations and imaginaries are socially entrenched, also with the help of and throughout media communication. In our project, we were interested in the discursive framing of the term big data that accompanied the datification. And that meant to investigate how journalists and digital natives, likewise, coaches, trainees, data scientists, politicians, and big tech bosses have framed big data with different meanings in the media discourse. Admittedly, Minsky wrote about big data very early, with his work on artificial intelligence and its efficiency. But for the tech and finance sector, the works of Kitchen and Diebold are particularly significant. Other articles also discuss big data as a keyword for social discourse. At the same time, as Boyd and Crawford point out, big data has been treated as mythology with the aura of truth, objectivity, and accuracy. However, besides being a keyword in mediated discourses, big data also serves as an idea that underwent contextual meaning making processes from abstract ideas to concrete ideas. That means the term big data might belong to different contexts and themes, societal, political, and above all economic. Hereby, complex actors pose different problems and interests and use different framing strategies. That meant, and especially for framing processes, as well as for methods of topic modeling, we needed to gather big data in its multiplicity and in its relationality, too. Though big data as a term and keyword has been very well researched within individual studies, yet hardly any studies examine the discourse over a longer period of time, transmedially across different text formats, and even less transnationally. In our project Framing Big Data, we examine how the term and, likewise, hashtag big data has been depicted in three countries, U.S., Germany, and South Africa, while using both frame analytic and discursive approaches. In this vein, we have a historical focus to analyze how big data is used as a sociological, as a political, and a financial term from 2010 to 2020. We are also interested in how journalists deal with big data as a topic. How they problematize big data in the context of privacy, data warfare, and surveillance and which significant linguistic means and images are used. We assume a higher complexity of, on the one hand, meaning relations and context dependency in our text excerpts. These may result, among other things, from the fact that journalists relate to common understandings of data. Moreover, that journalists and users may want to discuss problems acting from their social, political, and professional contexts. 
Methodically, it means to explore how the hashtag big data can be investigated via combined approaches of both framing analysis and topic modeling. So, we ask, how can topic modeling be designed to reveal in topics not only individual issues, but also their implicit and frame analytic references? In our project, we are exploring how the keyword big data can be investigated on a long-term scale. Language changes and, with it, social phenomena change, for example, in media discourse. Accordingly, the main task here is to prove theoretical approaches and methodological procedures for large textual data that have been mediated and to adapt them to new data environments over a longer period of time. Hereby, we are combining approaches of both framing analysis and topic modeling, which seems to be challenging on several levels. Starting from a sociocultural framing approach, established by Van Gorp, we assume that each topic of big data contains semantic domain-typical patterns. Secondly, these domain-typical patterns are subject to a nature-given implicitness, following Ryan and Gamson. But moreover and following Van Gorp again, cultural motifs are the idioms and semantic pictures in mind, the imaginaries. They serve as a topic and can be extracted from a statement. Following this, the cultural motifs are the elements in the text that carry meanings and significance. They promote meaning. In this sense and following Benford and Snow, cultural motifs are patterns of mobilizing and counter-mobilizing ideas and meanings. Similarly, Goffman has assumed them as organizing principles. They are the elements of and within a text that transfers meaning. In this vein, we argue that cultural motifs serve as anchor for both framing analysis and topic modeling. How big data is referred to over time, which frames are initiated and addressed, is, firstly, anchored in their topics with their specific cultural motifs. Going on, a first study shows how both methodological approaches complement each other profitably regarding the analysis of cultural motifs which in turn allows to quantitatively capture such abstract and complex concepts in large data sets. Hereby, we conducted press material from online news sites, and we also collected user-generated aggregates. In our data, thousands of press releases and social media data from Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter extracted on the keyword big data, we recognized discursive references to public events such as political debates on regulation, election campaigns, data scandals, and economic innovations in the tech business. Hereby, it seems that big data was uneventful, while, at the same time, created a lot of new themes and side topics. In a way, we are researching large quantities of text data about big data. Furthermore, and in a somewhat ironical twist, we conducted big data on big data. So, in the following, our topic modeling is applied to framing analyses following the constructionist framing approach. We show a possible oprationalization of the sociocultural framing concept by Van Gogh. And in this vein, we show how to adapt topic modeling to processes of framing and reassessing big data as a keyword. To achieve our research objectives, the project uses a multi-method design. Also, it includes the qualitative pre-analysis of socio-political topic aspects and presentation aspects. April 2021, we began with the development of coding criteria for the press aggregates and news site aggregates. We read a total of 20 bestsellers on big data published between 2010 and 2020, the heydays of big data. In a tandem, we read the books and analyzed them in depth, thereby writing out passages that dealt with big data as a social, likewise, an economic, political, or normative phenomenon. All passage needed to allow conclusions to be drawn about framing big data. These annotations, together with the keywords in the books, resulted in the coding criteria. Further on, we sampled both the press articles and the user-generated content. Two keywords were the search terms, both for the press articles and for the user-generated content. These two search terms were the hashtag big data or big data as a buzzword in quotes. The second term was data with asterisk starlet, which includes such terms like datafication or datafied. 
In total, six subsamples per year resulted from the corpora differentiated according to the three countries South Africa, the U.S., and Germany. This material was again scanned for key events to record the periods of investigation per year. In depth, and within the journalistic material, key events were inductively identified as those phases in which the volume of thematically relevant articles increases significantly. The key events thus identified then serve as criteria for sampling user-generated communication. Last but not least, this material was used for our topic modeling. During the manual coding process, we annotated the 20 books that dealt with big data as socio-technological phenomena. Applying an inductive-deductive-based framing analysis based on Van Gorp's approach, we were able to identify eight cultural motifs shown also in the next slide. Afterwards, the paragraphs from the books, the manual analysis was based on, were used as the basis for the topic model. We implemented a methodologically valid processing chain for the modeling approach guided by other research. Each paragraph represents a document and typical NLP procedures and pre-processing steps as tokenization, lower casing, punctuation, number and stop word removal, lemmatization were used to further process the textual data. We extracted significant collocations, but not all big RAMs to represent important multi-word tokens. Then, we applied the implementation from the topic model's package in R to the data and the hyperparameters of the topic model were determined by using the Jensen-Shannon divergence from the tuning package. We used this setup in order to identify a valid number for the topics and the hyperparameters of the model. Afterwards, the generated topic model was validated with qualitative checks, coherence, topic intrusion tests and other methods. In the end, we evaluated the results by comparing the manually coded cultural motives with the top 20 terms from each topic from the topic model, which showed that the results from the topic model are similar to the results of the manual coding process. The assignment of specific colors was initially done by the researchers and the transfer of colors was then supported with a text search. First, the cultural themes were translated into English and then synonyms were identified. The synonyms were searched for in the topics table and colored when found. For example, social empowerment was defined by the existence of words like power, benefit, control, transparency, or liberty and can thus be assigned to topic 4 from the model. We added more words to the search based on our understanding of their meanings and cultural motifs and colored the rest of the model's outcome accordingly. As we can see, all manually coded topics can also be found in the model. As with all topic models, there is a general topic that we cannot assign. In addition, the terms for profits from political advertisement are distributed between two topics. This shows us that we can use the topic models to apply cultural motifs to larger datasets to search for the manually coded motifs. Quite comprehensible cultural motifs emerge such as data capitalism, surveillance, crime prevention, increased efficiency, or social empowerment. How hashtag big data is thematized and thereby framed in terms of media communication is not only a technical question, but also a socio-political one. A different openness to technological innovations can be stated during the last 10 years. Also, the political governance for data protection and data storage have become more critical. In this vein, the results gained are also to be discussed collaboratively and against the background of the increasing datafication of society and science. With the application of a topic model, it is possible to practically replicate the manually detected cultural motifs based on pre-coded paragraphs. Secondly, manual and automated approaches can be contrasted, which means in that case, to improve the manual frame analysis from the books with the help of automated procedures. Likewise, the results from the semi-manual and semi-automated methods can be used as seeds in a mixed method scenario to analyze frames in large datasets. By creating a topic model based on an inductive-deductive framework analysis, we can search for cultural motifs in very large data sets and ultimately evaluate them quantitatively. 
A modeling process guided in this way enables the valid traceability of search phenomena in very large data sources, and we are able to annotate those in terms of cultural motifs and then group data together. This allows us to automatically perform time series analysis, document filtering or metadata analysis, hashtags, authors, which will be some of the next steps in the ongoing project. Thank you very much for your interest in our work and results.